I'm Rob Lilwall, former geography teacher. I've decided to leave the classroom behind and explore the world firsthand. I'm completely on my own with no support crew, just my video camera and my bicycle Alanis for company. But this is no ordinary bicycle trip because I'm cycling home from Siberia. Adventuring makes me feel really alive. That actually makes me very happy. Ah, look at that! Woo! It gets me buzzing. I set off with my bicycle to ride home, hoping to take the most interesting route I can think of without dying. My fears included freezing to death. I'm struggling, I just uh, really move even a hundred meters. Being hit by traffic. Riding Grenier is always a bit of a challenge. Catching a nasty tropical disease. And I was also worried that I might run out of courage and just give up and fly home. Right, here we are in Melbourne. I'm about to set off on my bicycle and try and ride back to England. But now, I need to pack away the video camera for the first time. For he himself has said it, and it's greatly to his credit that he is an Englishman with you. I am so excited about having a video camera. Now I can record my journey as I go along. I'm only sorry I hadn't bought the camera earlier. I've always fancied myself as an English Quentin Tarantino. The joys of being both cameraman and uh, star of a movie means that I'm going to have to keep on setting up the tripod, riding past it, and then uh, running back to pick it up. But never mind, it's all part of the fun. and. Uh, this is the Great Ocean Road, um, stretching on and on. Soon I'll be turning north, heading for England. My bike's name is Alanis, which I'm slightly embarrassed about, but at the time I'd been listening to some Alanis Morissette and sort of thought I needed a good female name, a female with attitude, I thought. Alanis felt like a friend and a companion. Well, this is just about as far south as I'm going to get on this whole trip, so um, I've kind of made a kind of promise to myself that I'd make sure I went for a swim, but this is going to be a very speedy swim, just to warn you. Right, let's go. It's been a quite a tough day. Uh, I actually got pretty thirsty. I ran out of water a lot faster than normal and then had to go for a couple of hours uh, feeling really thirsty, which is my fault, but it's actually quite good preparation for the next four weeks. I've got a 3,000 kilometre ride to Perth and not a whole lot uh, of people living along the way. There's the bike and uh, most important of all, I've just been to the supermarket and got essential supplies, a two litre tub of ice cream to build up a bit of fat. Should polish that off in about half an hour of busy eating. And uh, mustn't forget a spare bottle of ketchup because um, ketchup makes everything taste better. <laughs> Very good ice cream too. Pedaling round and round and round. Let's try a headshot. That's the head. There's a shot. Bike from above. I remember I had a bike which we used to uh, ride around on the lawn. Just before my 18th birthday, I cycled to my grandma's house, which was about 20 miles away. 
and then I cycled back. Um, and then I started thinking, well, if you can do 40 miles in an afternoon, maybe I could do 100 miles in a day, so then maybe you can just keep that going and cycle further and further. There seems to be this big uh, sort of belief that all of the road train drivers take all sorts of drugs to keep them awake. Uh, whether or not this is true, I have no idea. Well, here we go, and here is another road train! Woo! Three trailers, that's pretty awesome. But it's not much fun when you're cycling on uh, this much little bit of road at the end. And just now, one really just sort of swept me off the road, almost into the uh, bushes. Well, we're about to head out across the Nullarbor Plain, uh, which is a rather long, empty road. And nobody lives there except the odd person in a roadhouse. And so I've been loading up with water. There is 10 litres on the back of the bike. Um, I've got two bottles there, so that's another maybe four litres. Uh, there's a bottle here, uh, a couple more litres. And then my thermos over there, I've got another uh, litre. So. Uh, Overall, 15, 16 litres, hopefully, will keep me going uh, all the way down the road. Lots of little parrots. It's looking pretty dry and barren. I've just filled up part of my... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, a fly just flew into my mouth. The road this afternoon's been a bit narrow. I hope it's not like this all the way to Perth and these huge road trains and now a bit of a headwind coming from the west. So. Um, I just think I'm going to have to take what comes over the next few weeks. Should be okay, but it could be quite tough at times. Well, it's rather grim of me to uh, film it. But there, believe it or not, is a dead ostrich. And um, I'm not going to go too near because it's covered in flies. But uh, it'll be great to see a live one. But if not, then there is a dead one. Well, if you look carefully at my flags, you can see they're blowing that way. I'm trying to go this way, but unfortunately, uh, the wind is blowing against me, so it's really slowing me down, which is a bit of a pain. The sun is just setting over there, uh, well, it's just set, which is nice. Still a few uh, road trains and uh, time to live for a campsite. And there's nothing quite like camping when the weather's nice like this. Perfecto, now it's time for dinner. Today I am... Um, 100 kilometres nearer to England than yesterday, so that's good news. Well, it's a pretty hot day. You can see there in the high 30s. And I'm actually here by some water tanks. I'm going to drop it if I'm not careful. And this here is my little bottle of iodine. I think there's one drop will do in here today. There we go. That just kills any germs. Strong wind, which is against me, making me go very slowly. So I'm pretty tired, making very slow progress. Whoa, three big boys. Filming left-handed now. Oh, he 
himself has said it, and it's greatly to his credit that he is an Englishman. Yes, he is an Englishman. Well, here we are at a little picnic rest spot. Here's my nice little picnic table. There's my bowl of porridge I'm just about to eat. Notice there are a few cobwebs um, under the table. There he is. Do you see him up there? These guys are called redbacks, and they're really poisonous. They probably wouldn't kill you, but they might do if you don't get treated. I started to get quite bored in Australia of the journey. Partly just because Australia is so big, it's huge, and there are hundreds or even thousands of miles between each city, and that meant on a bicycle I just had to sit on the saddle and pedal for days or weeks on end sometimes without really seeing an awful lot. I'm an adventurer first and a cyclist second. With all this tedious cycling, my mind is always wondering and in this dry and humid heat, my thoughts turn to the very different land where I started my trip 20 months ago, Siberia. I travelled at first without a video camera, but with my best friend, cycling adventurer Al Humphreys. We chose Magadan because we wanted our starting point to be as far away from home as possible. Magadan is haunted by the two million people Stalin sent to die in the nearby gold mines. The Russians are incredibly friendly people, but they were also quite pessimistic, and all of them had basically a different theory on how we were going to die if we set off along this road. And they would tell us about the bears, which were going to kill us, and then other people said, no, no, not the bears, the wolves will kill you, and then other people said, no, obviously it's the cold, which will freeze you to death. Little wall gaming on Humphreys on the outside of the bend. Paul Humphreys doing some extra effort. Oh, but Lil Wall, Lil Wall! And I remember waking up in the middle of the night sometimes in the tent in those first few weeks. Just kind of imagining, partly imagining what terrible situation we might get into, kind of trapped in the tent, like Captain Scott, me writing in my diary these few words, and our dead bodies must tell the tale. It was about 8 o'clock in the evening, about minus 20. I saw a car was sitting idling on the road just ahead of us, and there were a couple of guys leaning against the car. And When I reached them, they beckoned us to stop. And that's pretty normal in Russia. Everybody was so friendly, asking us to stop, asking us what we were doing. But as we started trying to cycle off, one of the guys was kind of holding on to the front of my handlebars, standing very near to the bike. And he said this word to me in Russian, dengi, which means money. So I said, sorry, I'm not going to give you any money. Then he said this word to me again, dengi. The other guy, standing a couple of metres away, I saw he was holding a gun in his hand, and he said, Dengi. He said, of course you can have some money. Um, so then he kind of rifled through my bar bag and found my wallet and found the money. And then he actually gave me the wallet back and, and sort of said, go. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse. You know, they could have hurt us. They could have taken all my stuff. They took a hundred pounds. And after that happened, we cycled on. We got to this town, both Al and I were feeling pretty shaken up and upset and it, it really it really shook us because we'd been growing so used to trusting everybody we met um, people had been having us to stay giving us food when we needed it when we were cycling through the kind of wilderness part of Siberia and suddenly we'd had this terrible experience I had to keep reminding myself not to think of the the hugeness of the task ahead but rather just think okay over the next month, I've just got to get to this city and then I'll figure out the next part after that. This was the point at which Al and I decided to take different routes back to England. 
He headed west and I cycled south to Australia. Well, finally, after all that straightness, 130 kilometres of straight road, there is now a bend in the road. Very, very exciting. I wonder what's around that bend. Kangaroo! A live kangaroo. Oops. There he is. Kangaroo! Hey! Hop off! Kangaroo! <laughs> Here's three tips when, like me, you're filming yourself and you don't have a support crew. Balance the camera on a rock and ride past it, but don't forget to pick it up again. Find someone you trust. I'm Jock and I don't know what to say. Hand them the camera and ask them to film. Hold the camera at arm's length and talk to it whilst trying very hard not to crash. Here we are on the uh, road less travelled. It's uh, quite an empty road. I have seen one car, uh, but uh, it goes on for about 100 kilometres without any settlements or about 200 kilometres without any settlements. And it's a nice homestead, apparently. Uh, 110 years old where I might be able to stay tonight. I heard about this abandoned homestead from other travellers and it's a welcome change from camping. I apologise for my slightly silly attire. I'm, I'm a bit short on clothes these days. Uh, let's have a look inside the house in daylight see what it looks like. Table where I've put all my stuff. Uh, there's one bed. There's another bed where I've slept with a mosquito net. There are a couple of emus running off the road. That's a bit odd. Trees full of shoes. I just stopped off by the sea again to see what the cliffs are like. Still no whales, but um, there are, instead of whales, uh, these mad photographers who've decided they're going to um, try hitting some golf balls into the sea for some reason. Right there. Do you get that on video? <laughs> I've got that on video. Oh. Well, I've made it across the uh, treeless Nullarbor Plain. I'm back in the land of uh, trees and water and sheep and cows and houses, and uh, it's kind of cool. Perth. I guess about seven months from Cairns, uh, about three months from Melbourne to get here. And it's good to be here. Next stop, Perth's Fremantle port to catch a boat to Asia. Well, here we are on board the Kota Palawan boat and getting ready to go. There's the lifeboat. And it's a big boat. It's good to be here. I'm about to go. I'm going to go up to the bridge and watch us leave. So that'll be fun. This is the boat. It's going to be four days going across to Singapore, back to Asia. It's interesting, my first views of Australia from a boat coming from Papua New Guinea about seven months ago. And now here we are leaving from Perth. When a ship crosses the equator, any crew member who hasn't crossed before must take part in a crossing the line ceremony. 
It's all a bit crazy, but apparently everyone has to do it, even a commanding officer. Then you can become a member of the Order of the Deep. alert. Um, I don't think we'll meet any, but you never know. I kind of think that the best way to get a book published or a film um, sort of bought by a TV company is to have something really bad happen to you. So if I was kidnapped by pirates, I'm sure that would increase my chances of, uh, of becoming a famous explorer. <laughs> Here's the iron gate, which will block this stairway if the pirates come on. Well, we're trapped inside now. Uh, we've locked all the doors because we're in pirate territory, especially when the sun goes down in a few minutes. And um, just looking out of the window there, it's a shame, actually, I can't go outside and get this, uh, this little sunset. But um, there's the sunset. Could that be a pirate? Mm, I don't think so. A bit slow for a pirate. No skull and crossbones. started to worry about going back to Asia again, I think because Australia had been fairly straightforward, this very kind of westernised country, very safe country, and suddenly I was going to go back to a country where they wouldn't speak English, I didn't have many contacts, lots of countries I knew almost nothing about, I started imagining all the things that might go wrong. We're almost in Singapore. In fact, you can see it behind me. So here we are in Singapore, north of the equator, the gateway back to Asia, and um, it's quite exciting really getting back to Asia, but I'm a bit nervous. But it's always cool to get to the next landmark. So there's Singapore. And my wheel is splitting, and I've just had two punctures in about the last five minutes of riding. I've come close to losing my mind with all the people hooting their horns at me, shouting at me. 